Christmas Eve early in the morning and then we had one Christmas Day five past midnight and it was down in New Brighton and somebody had been swept in, swept, swept in off the uh, slipway. Right. Uh, people had tried to throw rings to him and what have you. We launched and it was an incredibly bad night, it was awful. And, uh, the helmsman and the tractor driver did a great job of getting away, but they actually found him, which was very unusual. He, he, somebody had thrown him a ring, a life ring, and he was actually causing the rope of it. Yeah. I'm a hovercraft commander, senior hovercraft commander. Uh, I, when I'm out on the hovercraft, I'm in charge of it. Yeah, busy year last year. Um, people in the mud, that's what it's made for, that's what it's designed for. We've got people out of the mud, um, we, we had a, what they call a kite surf, and these people go out on surfboards with kites pulling them along, and we worked jointly with the lifeboats uh, again a few weeks ago, uh, just off where we just come in from now, just towards here, so there. And we searched the shallow water while the boats obviously stayed there, where they had sufficient water, and it turned out this chap we found, we was in the middle of us, so it worked quite well. Well, we're just about to recover the inshore lifeboat after an exercise. I'm just waiting for this commercial fishing boat behind me to recover. And then he's going to come past and he'll, he'll do a couple of runs past and we'll put the trailer in, uh, recover the boat, back to station, we'll wash down and uh, a bit of a warm through because it's quite a cold morning. We were on our way back in and the weather changed about halfway in. It went from a two to three to a five to six. All the waves and the tide were coming from the same sort of line. They were coming across at us and they were hitting us side on. It started the boat in a rolling motion. And when I popped me off the wheel, I knew that we were skipping about a little bit. But the sort of when I clocked the wheel, was the actual mast, which is about maybe 15 foot wide. It was doing maybe 20 feet out of direction, so I knew that we were sort of rolling. But in the middle of the outer sea, and you can't see land anywhere around us, but in the distance, like a pinhead, there's a boy. Unbeknown to me and everyone else on board, wind and tide pushed us directly at this boy. Now, whether it was like the flight of the bumblebee, I don't know, but we ended up um, about so it's 100 meters off the boy skipper of the super sea cat didn't deem it necessary to diverse his course or to slow down so he passed us about 200 meters away and he was doing 40 knots when he went past us but because of the speed of the sea cat and the design of the hull it produces a wave called the vortex wave Vortex wave uh, basically picks one wave up and will push it along. And when that wave sort of dumps, there's normally a space of two or three, two or three meters before another wave. A vortex wave is one sits behind the other by about a meter. So when one hits you and you're down, the other one breaks over you, and you know you're under the water basically. By the and then the first wave hit us and it actually picked us up and lifted us on the side of the boat. The actual whole hull sort of buckled. And when I mean buckled, I looked down at my knee and I looked through the hull of the boat into the sea and the hull had opened up three inches and about four planks and pushed it inwards. Now the whole thing sort of um, so I pushed in, a load of water hit me in the face and I turned away. And then when I looked back down, we dropped off the boy and everything had shut and sealed again. And I just I was just in disbelief. Like the whole back of the boat had gone under the water and we had two inches from when the water had been coming in the back of the boat because all the weight had been transferred to the rear of the boat. When we fell off it we sort of slipped in, a load of water rushed in, but then we bobbed up again out of it. And it, it's so I had them washed up the deck, you know, because we sort of fell out of it. The lifeboats had the bonds in the situation, and 
that they deemed it uh, a valid launch to come on with the sisters. The light bulb went just, they, they turned up like that. Well, we want to hit the water in under seven minutes. So from the first call nice. going into Coast Guard, we're usually in the water between four and five minutes. I mean, if I wasn't bottom out in the sea up to the chin, but we were still very, very pleased with the sea because everyone on board had had a reasonably serious fight. Me, me more than others because no one was in that way and I should be when, you know, the plan can open up in the south of the boat now. I thought that we were going to slip in backwards and had that had gone off. I mean, the boat was a hard wood hole, so you could have sunk the same as the amount of wood, but so we just got it up in two or three seconds. Had it been stuck in the wheelhouse, uh, and the only way out probably would have went through the forward hatch in the toilet. Uh, they came on board, they were happy with what we got on it. It's just one of them things that, luckily enough, we have here on our line for. He came on board, he said, oh, I was going to call. we made him a cup of tea on the stove with a kettle, and you know, yeah. and we gave him a brewery and the bought tea, and um, you know, just said, look, you know, for all things. He agreed totally with us, um, and they, um, they then took us into baking their docks. Very, very scary. Uh, um, it did, it did very much sort of put me off it at the time, but I've moved forward. And, you know, I've, uh, I've got over it and I've got all the rest of my 